Let's be honest, I'm too old to have a TikTok account, but I've been told by members of our team that there is some interesting property advice being given out on there. So I've asked them to put together a selection for me. I'm going to watch it now. Haven't seen them before. I'm going to react live. Maybe I'll learn something. Let's see. You're a teenager and you've always oh, this wanted is a good to start. You don't need money to start in property. Ah, you need loads of money, don't you? It's a common, common misconception. With common misconception. There are tons of ways you can get into property with zero or little money in. Build up your pot, then start buying. Okay, intriguing. Here's me for all this time thinking that investing actually involved money. But somehow you can invest without having any. I'm going to have to sign up for an account, follow this guy and find out how he does it. I'm just about to buy my first house in cash. How cool is that? Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, of course, because I won't have to give any money to the bank. Yeah, but having a mortgage is one of the cheapest ways you can borrow money. If you can borrow a low rate of 3 to 4%, you can invest the rest in the S&P 500, which historically has given 8% return. And what does that mean to me then? You'll make more money than you have to pay back in interest. And that's why you follow me for more money. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, we've spoken on this channel so many times about the benefits of using a mortgage. Completely true. I have major issue with the S&P historically returning 8%. Therefore, you think it's going to do so in the future. Loads of reasons why I think that's dubious. But the core principle is true. If you can use debt as a tool and do it responsibly, then yeah, whether you use that to invest in property or something else, um, yeah, it's going to be a good move. Uh -oh. Wake up in the morning? Yeah. No, not worth it. Not going near that one. Looking at the land registry data uh, for a while now, it's predicting we could see a 10% drop in house prices this year. So looking at 295, 10%, we're down to about £265,000. So boring. Okay, I'm disappointed. I was expecting a lot more dancing and a lot less numbers and analysis. I would question whether prices dropping 10% means that there are going to be bargains everywhere, but it certainly does mean that there are going to be people who are forced to sell into a slower market, so you might be able to get stronger deals than you would before. Oh, he's back and he's got a wig on. Is renting a house a waste of money? Renting a house has lots of benefits. You can move out at any time you wish. You don't have to worry about maintenance. And you can invest the savings. But every month my money's spent on rent, so buying must be better. Buying a house has lots of advantages. You can pay it off over time. Historically, the value will increase. And you can even rent out a room. Then it's a no-brainer. I have to buy. My simple rule is, if you want to stay there for less than five years, rent and invest invest your mortgage deposit. Okay, I actually completely agree with that one. I often say the same thing about five years being the threshold. We've got another video on the channel, which we will link to below, about why I personally choose to rent. So I agree with the advice. Not sure I'm going to start delivering it in that style. Oh, it's Uncle G. Most people shouldn't buy a home. No one should buy a home. No one should buy a home. Homes were built for banks. The bank created that product. Homes to sell money. We're not built for people. You can't just loan people money. You need a product in between. The bank can't lend money for just money. Like you need a reason to borrow money. Can't just call it a house, right? Everyone should have one, right? They got the politicians behind it. Yes, everyone should have one. And then what they did was basically those homes were built for banks because who made all the money on the homes? Wasn't even the builder. Certainly wasn't the homeowner. It was always the banks. Well, there you go. You heard it here on TikTok. The only reason we live indoors is because it suits banks. And I think some homeowners would take issue with the statement that they haven't made any money on owning a home. But let's move on. Ah, more no money stuff. That's what I wanted. Oh, yeah. Connect to every lawyer, doctor, surgeon, dentist, dentist on LinkedIn yeah. and yeah. message them all. Because yeah, yeah. they're all going to have a bit of cash. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. probably all want to get into property. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Pull the run through the process, do the refer for him, let's it out for him, and then you just pay your fee to do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, doctors and lawyers, famously gullible people, famously risk takers who are going to be happy to hand their money over to someone who's never done this before so they can go buy a house. I, this must work. They must actually have done some of what they're saying. I just find it so hard to believe. And I imagine you're going to get booted off LinkedIn for spamming before you get anyone saying, yeah, the thing that's been holding me back is I just didn't have anyone to give my money to to do it for me. Unbelievable. Here's how you can get into property from just five pounds. Right, five pounds. I mean, he needs to watch the other guy. I've just heard I can do it for nothing. Now you want me to pay a fiver? Forget it. Reed's short for Real Estate Investment Trust is a property investment company where you can benefit from the same revenue streams as traditional properties like appreciation and rental income passively, but with a small amount of money. Okay, that's actually 
well, true and correct, which is useful, but not funny. Sorry, but you don't earn enough money to afford this 400k house and you don't have a 40k deposit. I know, that's why I'm buying it for half price. What are you talking about? I'm a first time buyer in the UK with an income of under £80,000 a year. And that means I'm eligible for a 50% discount on the market value of the house under the government's first home scheme. Fine, but who's teaching you this? I just follow Kazazheim. Hey, I'm actually going to need to go and Google this. A few moments later. Five minutes later. One eternity later. Okay, I've actually learned something because I've never heard of that. Not quite as good as it sounds because it's only for key workers. The discount stays with the house forever. And it seems like there's only about 1,500 of these in the whole of the country that are eligible. But I guess it's good that people can find out about this stuff through TikTok. If I had now just £1,000 and I wanted to get started in property, here's exactly what I would do. First, I'd go online to open rent and gumtree and look for properties to rent. If I found a nice place that I liked, I would contact the landlord and I'd let them know that I'm looking to do service Here we go. Airbnb. Once I get their agreement, now I'm going to look for an investor to buy this deal from me. And I'm going to find these investors on the different property groups on Facebook. Once I find an investor, I send them the deal. Once he likes it, he pays me £3,000 and then I continue to do that until I sell two to three deals and then I'll use that money to put towards my own rent to service accommodation deal. And I'll continue repeating the same process over and over again until I'm at the point where I'm making some nice residual income and then I can start buying. Okay, so first I noticed he's saying, I'm going to do this. Not clear if he actually has done this. Again, it's one of those things that must work sometimes, but I've been on the receiving end of this. You put a property up to rent, you get tens of these people getting in touch saying they want to do rent to rent or something. You just like, just no, like trying to find that and then trying to package it up and sell it on to an investor. Again, it must happen. But this is even the stage before rent to rent because rent to rent, you need some amount of money, hardly anything compared to investing, but still something. This is the forerunner to that. So if you can't even do rent to rent, you sell rent to rent deals before you've done it yourself. Again, I'm sure it's technically possible, but there are so many other ways to make money that are way easier. Well, as we've said so many times, property is an incredible way to compound your wealth over time, but to make money in the first place, you're really scraping the barrel trying to find ways to do it here. There are so many other businesses you could start instead. Well, I could say I'm pleasantly surprised. There was some decent advice on there and some viewpoints that you probably wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. So I think that's pretty healthy. But of course, there is also a load of absolute rubbish on there, just like there is with any platform. And the problem is, I imagine the algorithm is going to push the buy property with no money down stuff more than it is the more sensible advice. But what matters more than any of this when you're buying property is to get your numbers right. If you overpay for a property or you underestimate your costs, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So watch this video next, where we give you a free spreadsheet that you can use to analyze property deals. And I'll talk you through exactly how I use it every time I'm making an investment.